All right, what's going on guys? G Dog Casey here with another Final Fantasy 14 tanking video. This time we are going to be entering the Sunken Temple of Karn. And this one is actually the one that I expect to be the toughest for new players. This is when the difficulty spikes right up for those of you who haven't done any research on the dungeon you're about to do. Because there's a few mechanics here that Unless you're, uh, you know, if you're tanking, unless someone in your party stops and tells you, hey, you know, this is how you're supposed to beat this boss, or this is how you're supposed to get through this area, um, you're going to have a rough time the first time through. My first time through, I actually had watched a video about it already. I knew what to expect, but it was just, it, it was really tough, and we actually ended up wiping to the point where we couldn't even finish the dungeon without within the time limit. So... It's a tough one for new players, but after you've gathered, or after you know what, what to expect, and you've done the, the dungeon at least like once or twice, then it's actually pretty simple, and it's a lot of fun. So I'm really looking forward to showing you guys this. Um, <clears throat> from what I understand, this is going to be a th uh, level 35 dungeon, and I think we max out at level 37. So if that's the case, and we max out at 37, then we're going to be looking at having cover, which I think we had. I don't know if we had this for the last dungeon, but basically you can use this on another party member and you take all that damage. Um, it's very useful, but I don't use it very as probably as much as I should. You see, I have it here on Control Zero. It's pretty much like the last ability that I use. So, you know, ah, well, that's going to happen. Um, and then as far as our actual regular abilities here, uh, yeah, I think we had awareness in the last one as well. Sentinel, if we do uh, end up going in at level 38, Sentinel is going to give us an extra defensive cooldown. 40% is really nice. So this is right here, along with all the rest of my other oh shit buttons. Like, oh shit, what's the healer doing? He's not healing me. I'm hitting all these buttons, pretty much. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and cut the video here while we wait for our queue to load up. It's a little bit late at night here, so I guess we're just waiting. Let's take a quick look. What do we got? Yeah, less than five minutes. All right, so we're gonna sit here and wait until we are good to go. I'll see you guys there. All right, guys, here we are in the, the Sunken Temple of Karn and we're gonna get ready to get into this dungeon here. Just waiting for our buffs as our healer's gonna be putting stone skin on everyone. I'm expecting protect soon as well. And there we go. So we're off and ready to roll. Okay, so first off, a nice simple pull just to get things started. We're just going to do, as we've always done, there's three enemies. We're going to run in, hit flash three times, and then pop our cooldowns and get going. Make sure to hit your shield swipe whenever you have an, the ability to do so. Extra damage, you might as well do it. And we can use Bloodbath as well, just to help our healer a little bit. And we're going to move over to number two now. Looks like someone's hitting number three. So we're going to lose that guy soon. There he goes. So we'll pop Provoke, and then just hit him with our combo. One thing I forgot to mention, guys, in order to be able to do this dungeon, it's actually not part of the story quest. Um, this dungeon quest is going to be handed out by our best friend, Nedric, in Vesper Bay. So standing kind of right outside the Waking Sands, where you're going to be spending... A whole bunch of your time that's where we will uh, be getting this quest so this stuff here is just a little hint for later the flame is on the left and the fruit is on the right something to keep in mind our healer has asked for a second so we must oblige because otherwise we will not be healed um, but most of the mobs are gonna be pretty standard for this dungeon except for one well actually there's actually a couple different uh, different mobs here that we'll be, we'll be seeing for the first time, so 
I'll explain them as we get a, as we uh, come up on them, I guess. There we go. He was ready to roll. Yep. So let's head down here. All right. So go ahead and pull. I don't think it really matters who you focus down first. Um, in some cases, <clears throat> if you know ahead of time that you're going to be facing an enemy that does AoE attacks or does some sort of stun or, you know, just something kind of annoying, then you want to focus that guy down first just to get him out of the way so you can easily take care of the rest. In this case, I'm not sure if the accused actually does have any special attacks or not, but if they do, just dodge them. By this, <clears throat> by this point, you should be getting more and more comfortable with the actual movement of your character and how to avoid the AoEs. And, um, you know, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. We lost this guy right at the end here, but we had already gone on him before we lost him, so we won't lose him for very long. And we'll get him right back. No big deal. And we'll DPS him down. There are these pedestals around the place that have things on them. So we picked up the Helm of Might. One of our buddies picked that up. And now, is it now? I'm not quite sure when it is. Ah, uh, there, I see them in the background. See those temple bees? You want to make sure that they do not join this fight. And if they do, then you need to get on them and dispose of them as quickly as possible. I'm going to run up the stairs a little bit just to make absolute sure that we don't uh, end up pulling them. Somebody's focusing down the wrong target, so this is going to happen when, when that happens. But we'll go ahead and pick him up again and just DPS him down. Now the bee is on us, so we must focus down the bee. We're going to focus, we're going to pop our cooldowns. And we need to kill this guy as quick as possible because he's going to have an ability called Final Sting. I think it's called Final Sting. Final something. And if that hits you, it does a ton of damage. It'll probably one-shot everybody except the tank. And if you're not well-geared as a tank, then it'll probably one-shot you anyway. So, you just whenever you see the bee, you want to focus the bee down first. In this case, we're going to try to pull... No. So we have, we have a bard here who likes to pull, and this might be a good time to sort of demonstrate a dungeon where this is the case, because so far in this series, we've actually been pretty lucky in terms of our teammates. We've had some really good teammates, um, you know, a, a couple scholar pets here and there that are trying to pull threat, but besides that, um, we've been really lucky. Now this Karn Facer is going to try to run away. And we don't have enough DPS here in order to take him down. He's going to pull us into that fight. We don't want to chase him in there. It is possible to kill him. And if you do, you get like an extra... You get an extra... Uh, what is happening? Oh my god. You get an extra chest, I think. But... Alright, so our bard here is pulled once again. He says he's sorry. We'll see if he really is or not. So we're going to pop a few flashes. And get on this B. Because if this bee gets a chance to pop off Final Sting... Ugh, this bat though. We lost this bat. So we have to grab him back here. The bard is not focusing down the proper enemy. And there's Final Sting. That's gonna hit us. And... Yeah, you can see how much damage it did there. Quite a bit. So we're gonna pop a couple defensive cooldowns here. As well as Convalescence. To allow our healer to get us back up nice and fast. And we're just gonna mark this guy here. It's a little bit hectic so far. And I think it's just because of a little bit of disorganization by our party. If it keeps up, I will attempt to... Have a quick conversation with our team and make sure we're focusing down the proper targets. But I'm gonna keep it nice and civil. And if they don't decide to listen, then I'm not really gonna care. Because it's not worth the fight. Now, already, though, we are coming up on our first boss of the dungeon. And this guy, if you're not sure of how to deal with him, 
he can wreck you pretty quickly. So we're gonna go ahead, we got our stone skin, and I'll explain the fight as we go. So, at the beginning it's gonna be nice and easy tank and spank. Force him to look away from your party, so that if he has any sort of conal frontal attacks, um, it, w it will only hit you and not them. And we also need to keep our head on a swivel here, because there's going to be adds that join the fight. And when these adds join the fight, it is imperative that we kill them as quickly as possible. So I'm actually going to save my cooldown. So here we go. Got the Dung Wesps. However you say that. Popped off a couple flashes. We'll try to focus this guy down. We're going to pop our cooldowns. These guys have Final Sting as well. And if both of them get a shot off, it's, uh, it's definitely going to kill you as a tank. And if they hit any of your teammates, it'll kill them as well. So there we go. Took care of them. And now this guy is getting close to about half health, where the second mechanic of this fight is going to kick in. You're going to see that he's going to have this ability like this, room wide, and it's going to put this debuff on us called Doom. So we're going to be looking for the square that is glowing orange, step on it, and it removes your Doom. That is all you have to do. Okay, now we have Dung Wests again though, so now that is not all we have to do because we have to kill these, uh, these wasps. But also, Doom is going to be put on put on us again here. So we're going to look for the proper square. It's going to be over here. You see we removed the Doom counter. And both Wesps are dead. So there we go. Looks like one of our teammates popped a limit break there. That's okay. Might have taken care of the Wesps actually, which would be pretty helpful. And we're going to continue to keep a lookout. So now we got Doom on us again. And we're going to... Oh, we got faked out. Shit. Okay, well, we're fine though. Because you have 11 or 12 seconds to debuff the, the Doom. So that's all you really have to do. Keep an eye out on the glowing square and just know where you have to go in time. Okay, we lost our Bard. I'm not sure how that happened. We're gonna go ahead and make sure these Wests are on us. Not having a Bard is gonna be a little bit annoying because he does a lot of damage and we need to do a lot of damage in order to take these guys out. But it looks like we're gonna be fine. And we'll get back on the boss again. I think the bard must have forgot to debuff the, the doom or whatever. Whatever that's called. It's not called debuffing. You know what I mean, though. Alright, we got hit by Frightful Roar there. So we're going to take more physical damage. But the guy's almost dead anyway, so. There we go. So that's the first boss. And you can see, like, we had no trouble with him. First time I came through this boss, though, he was a nightmare. <laughs> and it's kind of funny to say that considering how easy it is now even with a team that you know is not not really acting as the perfect team uh, We were still able to do it without a wipe so nicely done and Now we need to keep an eye out because I just saw a bee go down there We're gonna come up here. We're gonna fight this bee And we're gonna stay up here No, of course not. Okay, so the other bee got pulled as well as everything else so Go figure. I, this is just going to be one of those types of dungeons. And you know what? It's totally fine because... Okay, we need to focus here. It's totally fine because these types of dungeons are going to happen. You're going to have teammates who just love to pull. You're going to have teammates who accidentally aggro other enemies. And we need to kill this bee really quickly. See, they're not focusing down. They're hitting this death claw, which is the last thing we really need to be hitting. And we're about to find out soon here. Oh, there we go. Only the death pile left, so... Somehow that other bee died. I guess someone else was hitting the other bee. Well, you can see here that the bard is kind of the one that's causing us trouble here. Alright, so this is a special type of enemy as well in this dungeon. And he's not very hard at all. The only mechanic with this guy is we have to kill him on this square. So we're going to try to get him to come in here and then we'll just fight him right here. Nice and simple. Not a big deal. He dies quickly. He's not very tanky. And that's it. He'll open the door. Now we have these two guys, which, again, I, I don't know if that was our bard or not, but it was someone who just allowed them to be pulled. And we'll go ahead and focus this guy down over here. And try to get him on this uh, block here. There we go. I think that's a decent spot for him. I don't feel the most comfortable about it, but it's going to have to do. 
There we go. And now we'll just throw a shield lob on him as we run. Make sure he stays aggro to us. And pull him through and then fight him right on here. Again, should be okay. It's not perfectly on it, but I think he's on it enough to the point where it should be. All right. There we go. All right. So in this fight here, I know the Condemned have AoE attacks. So I'm just going to focus down the Condemned first. Three enemies. Three flashes. Just to reiterate our basic combo here. Pop our cooldowns and get to work. We'll pop Bloodbath as well and Shield Swipe. And we'll just move out of the AoE. And we'll focus this guy down. Now when he gets to about three quarters, we're going to move over. We're going to highlight number two. And we're just going to start going on number two. Get another Shield Swipe in there because we're awesome. Everyone is attacking us because we're doing a great job. And we'll just focus down number two. And again, right up until he's about, you know, three quarters health. Maybe a little bit below that. Right around here. And then switch over to number three. And go to town on him. You know what? Maybe, maybe it's just my fault. I haven't really been the most organized this dungeon with my marking. So I'll try to make an effort to keep my marking up. When pulls get messed up right from the start, it's a little bit difficult to remember that you have to mark everything. So, that can happen from time to time. We're going to come over here. Again, I know the Condemned has an AoE attack, so we're going to focus him down first. Because you just might as well. It just makes the fight easier for your team. Only two guys here, so we'll flash twice. And then just go to town with our combo here. So, you probably noticed when we killed those uh, blockheads, whatever you want to call them, um, when we killed them on those tiles, it actually had the door open. And in here we can get these little pieces that are kind of like the pieces to the riddle of this dungeon. Most of them are going to open up the secret doors so that you can go in there, have an extra fight, and then grab a chest and, you know, maybe get a nice piece of gear. Or some potions or whatever but two of the pieces are actually going to be needed for us to be able to get through the end and I believe we may have already picked those up I'm not quite sure the order in which these are uh, in which those pieces are placed but as long as you're following me and as long as you're clearing out every room that you see you'll be able to find them no problem they're not particularly hidden or anything they're just along the way just make sure you find them so here's our second chance at the Karn face. We will go ahead and try to kill it here. Honestly, I can't remember what happens if you don't kill it. Because I think that I have been able to kill it every time. So there it goes down. And we can switch back to this dude here. We'll hit our Rage of Halone and then we'll switch over to number two. And so far the taking's been pretty good. Been able to keep most of the enemies hitting us. We lost threat a couple times, but... We were able to get it back right away, so no big deal. I think the Bard is using his AoE attack here. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. I'm not as familiar with the Bard as perhaps I should be, but it did look like he was using his AoE attack against just one enemy, so that's happening. Uh, there you go. So if you're a monk, then you'll like that. All right. So we're going to continue to head this way. And we're actually getting pretty close to the second boss. This, this dungeon really isn't that long, which is really good. But the first time you're here, you might have a little bit of trouble. So we're going to try to get this condemned. I think he is separate of the pull. We're, we're going to find out right now, though. Yeah, he's by himself. So we'll pull him over here. And hopefully we'll be able to fight this guy without the bard pulling extra threat. Of course, he's standing somewhat dangerously close. Because why not? But it looks like he's okay there, so that's fine. And when we all focus him down, we have a good time. So now I'm just going to grab this guy. I think there's another Condemned wandering around here. Maybe I'm wrong. Looks like I'm wrong. You can see the second boss in that room there. So three enemies, three flashes. We'll pop our cooldowns, and we'll get to town. Our health is getting a little low, so we'll use Bloodbath just to help our healer out a little bit. And these guys are really easy. So as soon as he's about three quarters, we'll move here. We'll highlight this guy's too, so the party knows 
who to select after they're done killing number one. Sometimes they switch early. And that's not really the best for, you know, in terms of damage efficiency or anything like that, but what can you do? All right, he's down. And, well, not down yet, but he we're done with him. And now we're going to just start focusing number three down to make sure he sticks with us. The Bard is not using any of his abilities. He's not attacking. I'll just ask him if he's okay. The part has to go. Awesome. Yeah, so he just ditched us in the middle. Uh, we'll see how long it takes here to deal with this. I think you're supposed to go here and vote to dismiss AFK. So this is good to know. If you ever need to vote someone out, you can just go in here. You push O to open up the social window. And you'll see whoever you want to kick here. You right click and go to kick. And now, I think we are... Do I have to come back here? Ah, there we go. He just showed up. So we have a new DPS. And he's going to be another dragoon, it looks like. So we'll wait for him to get here. This uh, boss is actually pretty simple but my first time through here we had trouble with this guy too um it's i'd say this boss is easier for the tank because all you really have to do is just tank and spank him um there's two pieces there's the soul stone and then there's the actual guardian himself but well his soul stone is full health he has vulnerability down so when vulnerability down is up, it means that he takes almost no damage. So basically, the mechanic is we just have to kill the Soul Stone, and then we start doing damage to the Guardian. And then after that, the Soul Stone comes back to life, and we just go back on the Soul Stone. The trick is, um, he he is going to be slinging AoEs everywhere. Um, and it, it's really not that hard to dodge as long as you're on point, and as long as you, you know, you're pretty good with controlling your character and moving him around. I'm gonna just make sure they're all ready. Maybe get a stone skin on us. He does decent amount of damage. Ah, it doesn't really matter though. Honestly, so just make sure you're targeting the soul stone. I'll even put a one on him just to make sure the party knows. And <clears throat> as usual, we're gonna get behind and we're gonna make sure he is looking away from the party. But for this boss, it's not really going to matter because he's just going to randomly target different party members, whether you're tanking well or not. And it's up to them to be able to dodge the shots he's going to throw at them. You can't help them in that aspect. They're going to have to do it themselves. So, the Soul Stone is already almost dead. We have some pretty good damage going now. There goes the Soul Stone. We'll jump. We use Tab to select the Guardian instead, and we go on him. We just do as much damage as we can until the Soul Stone resurrects. Pretty simple mechanic, to be honest. I don't remember if I've ever gotten the Soul Stone down that fast within the first round here. But you can see here, it doesn't matter that I have threat. He's still just going to turn into a, a random party member and try to use his, uh, his abilities on them. And they just have to dodge it, and that's it. They, this could be a little bit tougher for the healer, because the healer needs to be healing and not dodging. I was on the Guardian that whole time. That is totally my bad. Make sure that everyone else is switched. That's my fault. I was busy talking there, and I kind of lost my focus. So I'll make sure we're on the Soul Stone. And you can see, just stay close to him. So that you don't have very far to run to dodge the AoEs. He's down again. We'll get on him. I'll pop my offensive cooldown. I'll keep my defensive cooldown open just in case I'll need it. And we'll just use our combo on him. <clears throat> I 
and he's already almost dead. We're probably gonna have to kill the Soul Stone one more time. So yeah, we'll use Tab to get back to the Soul Stone, and we'll just go right back to work. It, it's really nothing to it. Um, our DPS and our healer are gonna be having a harder time than we are. So if you play those classes, just make sure you're quick on your feet, you're able to get out of those AoEs, and if you're the healer, just make sure that, you know, for the most part, you're gonna just wanna be healing. Because if one of your teammates gets nailed by one of those abilities, it's gonna hurt quite a bit. But here we go, the soul stone is down and we are back on the guardian. Oop. And down he goes. So pretty easy stuff. I think once we got rid of that bard, and I mean, it's not like that bard was, was terrible, but I would say that he wasn't helping us out very much. Okay, which way do we go? I always get lost here. The team's going that way. Oh yeah, you just look for the enemies because there's enemies here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this guy and I'm going to pull him down here. And we're going to try to keep the Condemned away from us. It doesn't really matter though. In fact, we probably will just end up pulling him, but we'll see. Pop our cooldowns here. Make sure we can see where that Condemned is. Pop Bloodbath and Shield Swipe. Move on to number two. Whoops, messed up my cooldown there. And here comes the Condemned. So, oh, he's actually going the other way. So close. But I was getting ready to go on him. Because when he joins the fight, nobody has threat build up on him yet. So he's going to go attack whoever is bugging him the most. Which is usually the healer. So now we'll switch over to number three here. Well, our DPS kills number two. Just try to position the enemy so that our Dragoons are behind him. And keep an eye on that Condemned. Not really a big deal from this point, though. It's pretty easily done. I'm just gonna go grab that Condemned myself. New shield Swipe. In our combo. I'll see if I can can't... Ah, no, see I couldn't. Because as soon as I said that, he used the ability. And I had already used my uh, global cooldown, so too late. Alright, we have a few more rooms to get through, but then we're going to be pretty much done. We have one more boss left. So these death claws really aren't too tough, just choose one to focus on. Make sure they're hitting you. Two flashes ought to do it. Go to town. Again, keep your head on a swivel. Make sure that you're not missing anything. As a tank, it's your responsibility to make sure you know that your party is safe at all times. I'm going to focus down this croc first. Pop our cooldown, because why not? Healer's gone to grab a chest. We are taking some damage. Actually lost uh, threat there for a minute, but it's all good. Able to kill the guy on the box. Did he go pick up that chest? I'll sprint. High ether for our healer. Okay, so same kind of fight here. I'm just gonna let my TP get up a little bit since I sprinted like a silly person. 
Alright, we're good to go. Once again, we'll focus the croc down since he doesn't have to... He doesn't have anything really special about him. So... He doesn't have to die on that block, so we'll just kill this guy right here in the middle. Got GOEs. Alright, now we're gonna position this guy on the block. I hate when I do that. Ah, shit. Alright, we lost him to the healer. There we go. Should be good. Right here. And down he goes, opening the door. Now we have some more chests this way. So this is when you pick up those helmets and the, like those things on the pedestal along the way. You drop them on these areas. Bastard sword, huh? Yeah, we don't need that. Anything going on over there? Nope, they picked that up. Oh, it's a belt. Don't need that either. Alright, so we'll try to take care of the condemned first here. This is a narrow hallway, so... And there's a couple more enemies right behind. So we want to be careful, obviously. Pop three flashes for three enemies. Get our cooldowns going. And just be ready to dodge the AoEs that these Condemns can do. It's really not too big of a deal. You can even... Yeah, well, I silenced the one, but the second one was going to do it anyway, so it didn't really matter. Alright, next up, number two Condemned. Get out of that AoE. That might have hit me. I'm not sure. That doesn't look like it. And just go to town, as usual. You guys are seeing a pattern here, right? The thing is, tanking is actually pretty simple. The biggest obstacle is going to be your own head. You know, the, the combo is simple to use. It's easy to tab target between enemies. Make sure they're hitting you over them. Use a provoke if you have to. But if you're nervous about it, you're going to have more trouble than someone who's not nervous about it. Honestly, at this point in my tanking quote-unquote career, I actually enjoy going into dungeons that I'm not sure how to, def how to beat. And instead of asking my team how it's done, I just like to go in there and try to figure it out. Now, you're, that's not to say that that's the right way to do it every time. Your team might be kind of pissed off at you if you run into a boss fight and they thought you knew the mechanics and you clearly didn't. But if you're able to recover without wiping and end up killing the boss, then what's the big deal? It's not really going to matter. So he's setting it up here. He's got the flame in the left and the fruit in the right. I like to think of it as flame has an L for the second level, so L for left. Fruit has an R as a second letter, so R for right. I don't know if that's deliberate or not, but that's how I think of it. And we'll be killing this last croc here. Can I just position a little bit better for our dragoons? Alright, so on the right pane, we're going to put the fruit... Did I... Uh, I guess the other guy was messing around. I'll just let them do it. So the door should open. Three treasure chests here. We'll be skipping this. Cutscene for the final boss. Wow, this, this one went much quicker than I expected it to. I'm not gonna lie. Picking up stuff. We got loot to roll on here. None of this stuff we're ever going to need. But it's nice that it's there. Alright, the Adjudicator. So this guy is not really that tough. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to run past. We're going to focus him away from our party. We're going to pop our cooldowns. We're just going to tank and spank him for a bit. Dodges AoEs. 
use our combo, make sure we have maximum threat as possible. And these little dudes are going to end up spawning in the fight. And we're going to want to kill them on these blocks if possible. I think anyway. Yeah, I got, I got, sh I got hit by one of those things, but not really a big deal. I'm going to pull this guy back into the middle. Just go back to town. Thinking about popping convalescence here. My health is getting a little low. I'm going to let my healer do it without it for now. This guy, we're going to select him, pop a shield lob. Not going to be enough. All right, let's go ahead and pop a provoke as well. Hit him once. And now we have these mithril verges here. Which are going to be shooting blue lasers. Oh, hold on. Sunjurer. There we go. We are out of that attack. We are in that attack. So, technically... Oh, shit. I'm stuck. Uh, technically, the defender... Or the DPS guys are the ones that are supposed to be killing these verges. But they are not doing that. I keep getting, like, stunned or something. I don't know. The boss isn't even on me anymore. Um, yeah, it's up to the DPS to be killing those guys, but we're just gonna go ahead and pop a provoke. And what is happening here? Okay, there we go. Jeez, I totally lost control of the handle there for a minute. Still don't have the boss on us right now. He's focusing down this dragoon. I don't have a provoke available, so I just have to hit him with my best combo. And just hope he'll, he will turn around and hit me instead. Not quite sure how this dragoon was able to pull so much threat off me, but pretty pretty impressive DPS since that's the case. These verges are up here again, but all you have to do is just make sure you're not in their area of attack, and you're fine. Still not able to get the boss on us. Alright, so we'll dodge this. We're going to use a provoke, and then we'll our combo we should be able to keep him on us now he's already almost dead good job by akitu the dragoon for tanking it up for a bit but not actually killing these mithril verges like we're supposed to i'll admit it's actually a little bit more fun to dodge the attack so i'm not too picky about it i don't really care and down he goes and that was it that's the sunken temple of karn so, like I said at the beginning of this video, this dungeon can be very intimidating, especially your first time through. Um, the healer... Yeah. We'll give our accommodation to the healer, and we'll check and see what kind of loot we got here. Another sword that we can't use, and we'll back out. So yeah, it's... It's tough on the surface, but as soon as you've done it once or twice, you're going to have an easy time getting through it, and you'll wonder how you ever had a hard time. If you wipe the first time, no big deal. Don't worry about it. Um, you know, practice. It's That's the only way you're going to get better, and you can watch my videos too. That'll help you a little bit, but honestly, uh, practice makes perfect, which has been said a million times. And yeah, so that's been the Sunken Temple of Karn. That was nice and fun. Next up on the docket, what do we got here? The next dungeon is going to be Cutter's Cry, which is a level 38 dungeon. And that one is one I actually haven't done in quite a while. So I'll be running a practice run a little bit later on, so I know what to expect for that. But anyway, in the meantime, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Sunken Temple of Karn, not quite as hard as people make it out to be once you know what's going on and once you've watched this video. So thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.